There have been 126 mountain lion attacks in North America in the last 100 years. 27 of these attacks were deadly. Although this makes attacks incredibly rare, it does not make them any less terrifying. The thought of an apex predator's teeth clamped shut on the back of your neck while you let out a blood-curling scream sends chills down the spine of even the most experienced outdoorsman. Unfortunately, these beige creatures of destruction rarely make an appearance. As a result, by the time someone notices them, it's typically too late. This is exactly what happened on January 8, 2004, when a lone mountain lion attacked two bikers on two separate occasions. This is Mark Reynolds and Anne Higel's terrifying mountain lion attack. Mountain lions roam the foothills and canyons of the Santa Ana mountain range in Orange County, California, all the way to the peaks. These massive and nimble beasts are keystone species in this environment because they help regulate deer populations and keep the ecology balanced for all its residents. Unfortunately, even though mountain lions give birth to many kittens each spring, their population is not growing. This is owing to the area's vehicle accidents, rodenticides, and habit loss. Furthermore, because they are landlocked, the mountain lions in the Santa Ana Mountains cannot reproduce with mountain lions in other locations. Mountain lions, as fearsome as they seem, are quite private creatures. They would never intentionally seek out human contact because they are normally terrified of people. Furthermore, there have been no known incidents of mountain lions purposefully hunting or stalking humans. So, how do we account for the attacks? According to some experts, mountain lions attack because people deliberately agitate them. Those who approach too close to the lion's kittens provoke a defensive response from the beast. They also react similarly when humans approach their most recent kill. After all, these creatures eat infrequently, so a recent kill could be its first in a long time. Unusual occurrences do occur, like in the case of Mark Reynolds and Anne Hegel. On January 8, 2004, Mark Reynolds was a competitive cyclist, 35 years old, working for a sports marketing company. He was an avid outdoorsman who raced bicycles and motocross through difficult terrain. Most of the time, Mark and his friends would ride around the trails of Whiting Wilderness Park. On this day, though, he chose to venture into the dangerous desert hills alone without a gun or pepper spray. He was, after all, experienced. Unfortunately, this proved to be a fatal error because the path system is full of twists and turns that span for kilometers. People who become lost here may not be located for a long time. Not to mention the threats of predators prowling in the vicinity. A terrible energy was developing as Mark rode his bike through the route. Mark approached a short incline around 30 minutes into his ride and rode hard to the crest. The chain snapped and hung from the front sprocket. Looking down, he yanked on the chain's two ends, shattering it in half. The chain had broken due to the strain of the ride. Mark hastily parked his bike next to a bush and crouched over the broken chain trying to figure out what to do. This is where things went south for Mark. A mountain lion emerged out of nowhere and tackled Mark, knocking him to the ground. Mark tried to fight it, but millions of years of evolution had taught the beast to seek out crucial regions. Mark was suffocated and his blood supply was cut off as the mountain lion sank its claws into his shoulders and bit him in the neck and face. Mark shouted in pain, but no one could hear him. He was alone and Mark had no chance. When Mark died from his injuries, the giant cat dragged his lifeless body into the neighboring bush where it began to devour him. Now the other instance was unfortunately directly related to Mark's accident. Anne Nigello was heading out with her friend Debbie Nichols for a day of cycling in Whiting Wilderness Park's desert hills. It was just another day for the two women. Anne joined the Marine Corps at the age of 19 and was stationed in California. This was the ideal lifestyle for her because she had always been interested in the outdoors. Anne was a strong lady who worked as a helicopter hydraulics technician, so it was not surprising that her favorite sport was mountain biking, a sport that demanded a lot of endurance and fortitude. Anne and Debbie enjoyed riding on the park's desert trails, especially Cactus Hill, a tight length with twists and turns. 
Anne and Debbie arrived at the park after work on January 8th. They were supposed to bike for 45 minutes. What was meant to be another routine day for them turned into a terrifying encounter. As they approached Cactus Hill, the two women rode down the trail quickly, unconscious of the impending danger. Anne, who was leading the way, came across another cyclist stopped along the narrow trail a few minutes into the ride. She came to a halt and inquired if he needed any assistance. The man pointed to a parked bike that appeared to have been abandoned for a few hours. He informed Anne that the owner was not present. It belonged to Mark. She ignored it and continued down the trail, unaware that the seemingly abandoned bike she saw was a sign of something dreadful. Anne soon came to a little climb and prepared for the trail's final descent. Anne noticed a flicker of movement in the corner of her eye and initially assumed she had scared a deer. Unfortunately, this was not the case, and Anne was in for the scare of her life. Her thoughts of the deer were quickly diminished as she felt the violent impact of 110 pounds of pure feline muscle going at 35 miles per hour. She couldn't even finish her thinking before the teeth and claws grabbed her. Anne had been knocked to the ground and was in the grip of a mountain lion. As the lion's razor-sharp claws ripped into her shoulder builders, she let out a blood-curdling cry. The beast was so powerful that Anne could only scream, Jesus, help me! The mountain lion seized Anne by the back of the neck and moved around to her throat. It dragged her two or three feet before readjusting its grip on the side of her face. Anne's ear was severed from her head by the beast. It continued to pull and reposition itself, eventually biting Anne's nose and shattering it like a hot knife through butter. Anne's cheek peeled away from the lion's unbelievable strength, and she hit the lion's face over her shoulder, but it had no effect. Debbie, who had just arrived around the corner, heard Anne's screams for aid as they resonated along the route. Debbie braved the frightening circumstances and raced towards Anne, not knowing what awaited her. A terrible scene greeted her. Debbie saw her companion on the ground, bloodied, and while she was terrified, she was equally outraged at the beast's savage effort to steal her friend's life. Debbie grabbed her sole weapon, her bike, and tossed it at the beast with passion. It had no effect on the agitated beast, unfortunately. Debbie responded swiftly and raced to her buddy when she saw the beast was pulling her down into a valley. She yanked Anne's leg in an attempt to keep her from dying horribly. It devolved into a one-sided tug of battle. I'm not letting go, I'm not letting go, Debbie shrieked as she yanked hard, pressing her heels into the earth. The mountain lion eventually reached Anne's neck and clamped down on her throat. Knowing she was dying, Anne gazed at her companion as though to say farewell before passing out. It would have been the last of her if other mountain bikers hadn't appeared and witnessed the violent struggle. They threw stones at the mountain lion, striking it in the back of the neck. It worked as the mountain lion let go of Anne and ran away into the forest. When Anne awoke, the first thing she saw was Debbie desperately attempting to get her attention. She was surprised to find herself still alive. However, she was having trouble breathing since she was choking on her own blood. The riders and Debbie carried Anne closer to the trail and felt the weight of her mangled cheek hanging from her face. Paramedics arrived in 19 minutes and loaded Anne onto a stretcher. She was rushed to the hospital and required emergency surgery. Doctors reattached her nerves and rebuilt her face. Anne miraculously survived the terrifying ordeal. The physicians concluded that the mountain lion's bite would have ruptured her carotid artery if it had been a few centimeters wider. It's a good thing you were there, was said as Debbie entered the room in the hospital. Anne was freed after only eight days and returned to her normal life with her family. Even though the attack disfigured her face slightly, she was able to get by thanks to the support of her family and friends. I don't see scars. I don't see injuries. All I see is my beautiful wife, said Anne's husband. Anne was fortunate to be surrounded by people during the attack. Mark, on the other hand, was not so fortunate. When the chopper arrived to transport Anne, they discovered a body on the ground. It was Mark. The unlucky occurrence caused the California Department of Fish and Game to go on the hunt for the rogue mountain lion. Authorities performed a necroscopy on the creature after it was exterminated. They extracted lungs, skin, and liver tissues from Mark's body. However, 
The question of why the mountain lion attacked remains unanswered. In Mark's situation, it was most likely due to his crouching while repairing his bike. Mountain lions normally avoid humans, but they are more inclined to attack tiny prey. A crouched person and a small, defenseless animal may be indistinguishable to the creature. Following that, the mountain lion led Mark to a separate location and partially concealed his body for later consumption. While riding down Cactus Hill, Anne accidentally came too close to Mark's corpse, provoking the beast to attack her in defense. She quickly became friends with Mark's family and became involved in the Mark J. Reynolds Memorial Fund, a charity that delivers bicycles to disadvantaged children. Anne has had six more reconstructive surgeries since the attack, allowing her to resume her normal life as a trainer. Meanwhile, Mark's family filed a lawsuit against Orange County for the event. They dropped it, however, after receiving numerous concerns from bikers who claimed they were aware of the dangers of approaching mountain lion area. Mountain lions are lethal animals. Despite their tendency to be secretive and aggressively avoid humans, we should visit their area with utmost respect, taking all required measures. Failure to do so may result in you getting mauled by the feisty animal. <laughs>